Also, because our lattice is an object with depth, we can also change the depth of each of those individual blocks that we put in there. So let's go ahead and try to do that. Something along these lines. Let's see how it looks in top view. So if you notice, the only direction that I move the lattice points is up or down, meaning that in plan, they stay exactly perfect to the geometry. What this means is this is actually buildable, right? If you think about it, all we need to do is select one of those elements, figure out the cut angle and CNC cut it, right? The support, well, that's another story, but as long as the main blocks work, we can sort out a connection point between them to select them and connect them. Let me repeat that. This is actually buildable because our blocks are exactly blocks. Only the top and the bottom are cut differently within each respective one. That's amazing. We created something buildable in no time. Let's make blocks. Where do we want bigger blocks? So we probably want them near the ground. So what I'm going to do along this edge here is just drag the top points, right? So let's drag them on one side and then let's drag the bottom points as well. So some of them touch the ground. So that's going to be the really thick edge. And let's thicken up this side as well. So we're going to just drag the top points. So you see it has this wonderful profile where it starts from thick and then it goes a little bit nice and thin to the part that's being cantilevered. So we can even define structural integrity by a simple thing like modifying the lattice. And let's do something similar on the other side as well. So this is thick and then it's going to go through a thin profile. So something along these sides. And we need to do the same on the other side because that's quite thin as well. So I'm going to drag these points, just the top ones, move them up and move the lower points quite down. We don't really care what's happening below the ground level underneath because that all those will be chopped off. So let's just look around at our object. Ah, one thing that I find always quite important is to make sure that a person can actually walk through it. And we can do that really simply. So shift A to add a mesh in a plane. Rotate, so RX90, and change the height to 1.83 and the Y to 0.2. The other way around, the, the X to 0.3 and then one point, what's the average person? 1.75 meters. Okay, but now you see that the middle is at ground. We want the bottom to be a ground. So let's go into edit mode, select the bottom edge press shift S and set cursor to selected. Click tab to exit out of object mode, right click and set origin to 3D cursor. Now our object origin is exactly that point. We haven't really talked about object origin thus far yet, but essentially it's that orange point which each object has and that gives us the relationship to the coordinates, right? The object could be really far away from its origin point but the origin point is the one for which we see the, the location coordinates in the sidebar. Okay, so now with our scale figure, let's make Z zero. Oh, so we, we, now we get a sense of how big this space is, right? And it's huge. It's a little bit too big. It's massive. Very tall as well. So we're going to have to shrink some things. We have to refine it because that would be very expensive pavilion to build. So that's right, because I think we can scale everything. So let's select both the lattice and the pavilion object and just press S. And let's move it now. G and then X and then G and then Y. So how's that for scale? It's getting a little bit better. I think it could be shrunken down a little bit more. So S. Let's go to a view like this. We can't really see our plane person because he's exactly rotated. So I'm just going to rotate him slightly. So I pressed the person, then R and then Z to lock the Z axis, just so we can see him in both profiles. Okay, now let's select the pavilion and the lattice again. Scale. Now it's a bit more like a tunnel. That's a much more appropriate scale to our person. So the overall size is 7.8 times by 4.5 meters. This wouldn't actually be expensive. We could build this, right? We just need a whole lot of two by fours or two by twos or four by fours or whatever they're called in your country. What if we don't want this implant to be a perfect square? So we can add a Boolean modifier and change the shape in plan as well. 
So let's do that. We're going to add a mesh. Of course, we start with a plane because in Blender that's the only way to start. So add a new plane, add mesh plane. Make sure the Z is at zero. And we're going to do this slightly different. We're going to keep it just flat as a plane. So now if we go to the modifiers, let's add a solidify modifier. So we're going to give this object depth. Let's change the thickness to 15 and change the offset to zero. So in solidify, the offset is the direction in which the solidify modifier works. If it's at negative one, it goes against the surface normal. If it's one against, it goes with the face normal. And if it's zero, it splits it half goes above half below. So let's make this at zero. And now we see what's going on, right? So if we change the thickness, let's change that to 25. And you see it got that much thicker. I think 15 is fine for now. So we have a depth. Next thing we want to do is turn off how this is visualized in the viewport. Go to the object properties and then viewport display. You may have to expand that display as wire. We just want to see the wire. Okay, so let's call this object Boolean and let's put it in our collection and plane.001, that's our scale figure. So we're going to put the scale figure here. So now let's select our pavilion again and we're going to add another modifier. So add modifier and we want to add Boolean. Select the object. And now we cut a hole. So with Boolean, and if we move our object around, you see our whole location changes as well. And the reason why we have a hole is because right now it's set to difference. If we change this to intersect, it's the opposite effect. So, so the only object that we have is the one that's intersecting with our mesh. So the really cool thing is that we can continue to add modifiers and refine our Boolean object and it is all dynamically relinked. So now let's go to top view. Let's go to edit mode. And let's play with the shape of our Boolean object. And remember, it's just a plane with solidify, which is great because we only need to modify these vertex points. So if we drag the vertex points around, so I'm clicking on them and then pressing G to move or grab as Blender calls it. And you see, we have some sort of shape that looks like this now, right? So if we go to plan view, that's what it starts to look like. So it's really interesting because our objects, if we go to top view, they're all still the exact same shape. So it's still perfectly constructible. Of course, we need to move our object down because it doesn't touch the ground quite yet. So let's do a different thing now. If we go to view, view regions, view, area, toggle quad view. So now we can see a top, a side and a quad view. And I'm going to disable my shortcuts because they're enabled four times now, as you can see. So let's zoom into top, let's zoom into side, and let's zoom in here. Uh, so I'm going to add a solidify modifier to our ground object as well. So we can see it in the side view a little bit better. So add solidify and let's give it like one meter thickness. And by default, it goes to the negative direction of the face normal. So that's fine. Okay. So now we're going to play with our Boolean to get to a point where our object touches the ground. But that's not all. We're going to add a subdivision modifier to our Boolean. So let's go to add and subdivision surface and change the levels to three and in the render to three as well. So now in plan, that's what it looks like. And in the sides, we have something that looks like this. I'm going to hide this for a second. Now let's continue to move our points around. And we can also change this, right? So we can insert a loop cut. So let's do that. When we do a loop cut and we have a subdivision modifier before this side was really rounded. Now it's a little bit less rounded, right? Because now it's taking the average, which is shorter between this vertex and that vertex. And if we do the same on the other side, you see the edges again became a little bit softer. So even with that extra level of subdivision, we can still move elements around, right? So if you go and move one of those vertex points, we get something that still looks a little bit softer. So let's move the edge vertex points. 
Or maybe one side does want to be a bit stretched out. That's the side that's more grounded. Let's take a look at what it looks like in 3D. So what I'm basically worried about is whether it touches the ground. If it doesn't touch the ground, it doesn't work. And then if you want, we can trim these sides here, the long side. So if I drag that point, you see it's already been brought in, which is good, right? That's the cantilever side. We want to keep the cantilever side as short as possible. But maybe the other side is a little bit trickier, so we extend it. And maybe it becomes a little bit more like a Pringle. So a little bit of three-dimensionality. Well, I'm going to edit this a little bit more on this side and that side our object is done our pavilion is so let's go to view area and click toggle quiet view again to go back to one viewport so this is the result of our pavilion so again it's very simple 